Good evening, everyone. We're going to wait just for a couple of seconds for everyone to come online with us. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. Good evening. My name is Laura Muldoon. I am the Senior Partnerships Officer at the School of Cines at the University of Toronto. And I'm welcoming you here tonight to the Leading Social Justice Fellowship Information Session. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us tonight. Uh, I just wanna clean a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, you can ask all questions through the Q&A box at the bottom and middle of your screen, uh, and we will be allotting a generous portion of our evening to taking your questions. So please feel free to ask as many as you like. Uh, the other item is that this session is being recorded and it will be posted on the School of Cities website. Uh, for those of you who couldn't make it tonight, you'll be able to watch uh, after that. Um, I just wanna take a moment right now to acknowledge the land that we are all on tonight. I know we're here virtually, so some of you may be on different land than I am, but I'm going to take this time and I ask you to um, acknowledge the land that you're on at the same time. We wish to acknowledge the land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. Uh, if you could advance the slide, please. So tonight we are going to go over uh, introductions of, uh, of our speakers here tonight and the team behind this fellowship. We're gonna talk about why it's important now uh, and why we, we launched the fellowship in this moment. And we're gonna talk about the, the kind of leadership development that this fellowship will focus on, uh, an overview of the eligibility and the key dates. And then we're gonna spend about half of the session uh, half of our time here tonight answering your questions. Uh, so advance the slide, please. So I've already introduced myself. Also here with me tonight uh, are my colleagues and partners uh, from the United Way. We have Nation Chung, who is the Vice President of Community Opportunities and Mobilization for United Way Greater Toronto, and Professor Numan Ashraf, who is Assistant Professor of Organizational Behavior at the Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto. Uh, behind the scenes, we have an incredible team from the School of Cities and the United Way who has worked very hard to put this together. Uh, and we also want to take a minute to acknowledge the co-designers and program contributors. Uh, and you can see their names there, some really incredible people that have worked with us to design this program. Next slide, please. So without further ado, I hand it over to Nation. Thank you, Lara, and welcome everyone. Uh, this is, as I was saying to my colleagues who have been working behind the scenes to develop this, an incredibly exciting project um, and pilot for us in partnership with U of T to bring the intellectual, uh, curriculum might of the University of Toronto and couple it with United Way's historical work uh, in dealing with issues that impact communities impacted by poverty. Uh, many of those folks being racialized, uh, Indigenous, Black, and certainly the recent impact of COVID over the last eight months have demonstrated uh, the fractures in our system and who is most vulnerable. And that as a catalyst has really crystallized this moment uh, for us to come together and create the space for the leadership necessary to think creatively about how we emerge out of this global pandemic that has disproportionately impacted so many folks across the world, but certainly here in the GTA, um, 
those folks who have historically lived uh, in poverty uh, and now showing vulnerability in terms of housing, food security, uh, mental health issues. So the question that we've asked ourselves is, what is the leadership necessary to build back a better Ontario, to build back a, a better GTA? And the answer to that is, this moment is now. Next slide, please. That this call to action is to mobilize the leadership that has been emerging for those folks who have been driving change in communities uh, in various sectors to say that this is the pivotal moment in which we no longer can afford to work in silos. We no longer can assume that government will fix this. We no longer can assume, assume that corporate sector will fix this or the not-for-profit sector will fix this. That the solutions lie at minimum in the intersection of these three sectors. Next slide, please. The work is intentional, driven by passion, driven by vision, driven by principles and values without a doubt. But really what is needed is intentionality. And what we've created here with U of T, inviting leaders across the GTA to participate in this uh, inaugural pilot is to bring intentionality passion and vision into this learning space and co-create solutions together. So we see the emergence of corporate leaders, public sector leaders and private uh, and not-for-profit leaders to bring their insights, their wisdom as a way to shine the light, to cast the path forward of how we will emerge out of the impacts of this pandemic and rebuild a more inclusive, equitable, community that at the forefront of our, our principles and values is the dismantling of systemic discrimination and racism that has marginalized far too many people. That's the core of our work. And we're proud to be working with U of T as a learning institution to elevate the knowledge, the consciousness and the practice to lead this work forward. With that, I turn it over to my colleague, my brother, my partner, Professor Newman Ashraf. Brother Nation, it's, uh, it's a privilege uh, to be partnering with you. Uh, Lara, I'm a little bit offended that while I never stand for ceremony and these long introductions, uh, maybe <clears throat> you wanted me to just jostle with you a little bit. I am very proud to be affiliated faculty at the School of, at the School of Cities at the University of Toronto. And I say this because I do this from a place of love. Right? Uh, I think the work of <clears throat> the School of Cities is important work um, for not just our city of Toronto, but for the University of Toronto. Dan, can, you, can I ask you to uh, forward the slide, please? I want to say to you that, and keep going, keep going. <clears throat> I, I want to say to you that our president, President Mary Girdler at the University of Toronto, uh, has made it a priority to say the following that we are not a great university if we're not a great university of the city of Toronto. And I think that really matters, right? Because if I think about what sets us apart from our global competitors at the University of Toronto, I wanna say this with much pride as an alum a few times over of this institution, that we punch way above our weight class. We actually beat and defeat institutions that are privately endowed with billions of dollars or euros. And I think that what that needs to remind us as an institution is to find what I call the equivalence of University of Toronto's in different sectors. And one of those equivalents is United Way. Because to me, United Way, Greater Toronto punches above its weight class. Brother Nation is not gonna tell you this. It is the biggest United Way in the world in terms of dollars raised. It is in my view, one of the most influential sectoral players when it comes to thinking about impact. Next slide, please, Dan. And I think that's where we need to begin. We need to actually have this conversation about what is, as Nation mentioned, this moment calling for. So I wanna say two things on that. Number one, if I can't have a movement, I will take the moment. I will take this moment and I will say that we need to actually take the tensions that have become so obvious. What tensions am I talking about? 
the tensions that come from acknowledging that privilege inequity is real. It has been for a while, but this global pandemic has shown us just how real it is. I am doing this session now from my office at 105 St. George Street. I could do this in my living room, in my study or my bedroom. There's probably three more options than most of my learners have. That's what privilege and equity looks like. My second comment is this. As we think about the future direction of leadership and who we develop as leadership, we can't actually separate that from the work of equity and justice because the leaders that we need and the leaders that this moment demands are leaders who recognize that unless we're leading across differences, we're not truly leading. But then I have a question for the people, the hundred or some participants that have joined us, the attendees. I wanna ask Adriana, Adriana, what is bringing you to this program? Turn on your mic, please, talk to us. Or you can put it in your chat if you so like. What is bringing you, what is getting you excited about this initiative? Please and thank you. I think you're on mute. Uh, is excited just about what you were saying, just about building strong leaders that can build build this equity. You know, teaching okay. them, inspiring them, and and mobilizing. So I think and it's we can't do it without you, Adriana. So we don't want you, we don't want you leaving anytime soon. My colleague and friend at the University of Toronto, Henry Sally, is on the call. Henry, good evening, sir. What is bringing you to this program today? Henry, you there? Yes, uh, uh, I've just been uh, given access to the- Whoa, whoa, Liverpool, Liverpool? What? I know, I know. Liverpool, Man City, Man City, brother. I know, I know. Uh, what's bringing me to this uh, conversation today is the fact that uh, as one of the previous uh, speakers has said uh, that equity work is intentional. Uh, and also the fact that we cannot do equity work unless we incorporate our experiences. Uh, so I think that's very important. And it's one of the things that inspires me uh, to engage in this kind of work. Uh, because if we do not stand up to bring our experiences to, uh, to the spaces that where we want to be included, yes. then we do not have, in my opinion, the audacity to complain uh, that there is no inclusion or equity. Right. So we need to ask ourselves the question, how are we contributing to this? How are we bringing this? Cheryl Case, welcome. Tell us what's bringing you to here today. Uh, so what's bringing me today is um, two fantastic organizations. First of all, City, uh, the, you know, the U of T and the United Way. Um, and I strongly believe in the value of um, supporting leadership in equity um, and uh, allowing people to ask difficult questions in, in spaces that they otherwise wouldn't be. And this type of programming is exactly the way to do it. Thank you. Can you put that on Twitter? Throw that out there. Tell people that that, in, that difficult conversation needs to happen. From the Rocket right. School, Jill, Jill Shakespeare. What's bringing you here? You see enough of me, Jill, in the classroom virtually. What's bringing you here this evening? Uh, thanks. Yeah, I'm here because I increasingly feel frustrated with having to convince often those above me to center equity in our work. And when I think about the space of services, we need to move away from providing people with service to building people's social capital. And so I'm interested in engaging in, in this kind of work, moving away from um, building community and social capital versus um, and giving people hope um, and connection. Nice, nice to see them. Alam here, Studi, you're back. Tell us what's bringing you back here in this conversation, please and thank you. Hi, hey, yeah, today I think what's bringing me here is being really aware, at least from a place of privilege, like the inequities um, all around us and the collaborative approach that this program has taken to address that. 
and using people involved in the community to address that. Excellent. Thank you very much. We could go on and on, but I, I, I want to ask uh, Dan to please move to the next slide. I want to say to you that collaboration to me, collaboration to me is wasted if it doesn't lead to meaningful impact, right? And what just a snippet that we've heard thus far today are reminding us that we're on the right track. That all of you are saying that you're tired of the same old, same old. You're looking for new ways in which you can leverage your interests, but also to be part of the impact that you wanna seek. I wanna to say to you, there's three things that distinguish this program from other such programs. Number one, we have designed this with and not for the leaders that this moment seeks. Number two, we want you to actually come with your fullest assets showing where you wanna say, I have lived experience, professional experience, aspirations, community connections, organizational capital, a will to challenge the status quo and to understand that you won't be asked to leave them by the door, the virtual door of this learning studio, but to bring them and to share them and to build and amplify them in service of impact. And the third thing that this sets, that, that, that sets this program apart from other programs is exactly what Brother Nation said earlier on. It is cross sectoral in a way that goes beyond simply putting our logos together. It is cross sectoral in allowing us to say, how do we not only create space, but hold space? How do we actually allow you to customize your learning, but also interrogate assumptions that you want challenged? Next slide, please. This is a famous study that was done by Dan Ariely at Duke University. And what Dan and his co-authors did was they actually got a bunch of people to Ikea and they asked them to assemble some furniture right? Then they were assembling furniture. And when they were done, then they opened up the second half of the room and the pieces of furniture that they had put together, they had the exact same piece of furniture on the other side, they were pre-assembled. And then they gave them actual cash. And they said, we would like you to spend this cash, but we want you to actually tell us how much would you bid for this piece of furniture that you just built versus the exact same piece of furniture on the other side, and there the price is written. So if you did this stool and the stool was $25, how much would you bid for the stool that you just assembled yourself? Let's go to the chat. Any guesses as to what happened? Any guesses, let's go to the chat. Let's see what you got. Famous study, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, not just higher, not just double, upwards of three times the actual retail cost. And what this study shows is when you actually have an investment in something that you have actually built yourself, you value it way more than other things like it. And I would say the learning that we want you to have is when you actually build something together, and this is why this cross-sectoral cross program asks you to come in with ideas to build across sectors, public, for-profit, not-for-profit. But it actually has to do with the impact that we're seeking where we systematically and consistently challenge the status quo. I want, next slide please, I wanna commend United Way that they have allowed us at the School of Cities and with my peers, I'm gonna call out um, Daniel and Sophie and others in, in, the, in the whole list of uh, collaborators where we've been actually been able to put our heads and hearts together to really focus on a purpose-driven leadership development program that we want to help create a process for. Next slide, please. And to me, that's a key in terms of how we have impact. I'm gonna recognize the incredible stewardship of the School of Cities in not just placing a big bet but multiple bets through the leaders who come to, through this program. Um, I will send you in the chat my tweets, my email address. I look forward to staying in touch because not only do we need you, we need you to get serious about impact. Laura, back to you. 
Thank you, Numan. And I hope everyone got a, a great taste of the energetic, uh, exciting style of our faculty lead for the program. So kudos, that was, that was fun. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, the program and how it works and how you can apply. Uh, and I wanna encourage everyone again to use that question, that Q&A box at the bottom and ask your questions um, because we will be, we'll, we'll be great, going right to those after this. Next slide, please. So this is what the program looks like. Um, it will begin in 2021 uh, with a kickoff retreat, um, virtually, of course. And the program will run um, nine bi-weekly virtual seminars. So these are in-person uh, seminars. And we will have uh, social justice educators, researchers, thought leaders, uh, inspiring guest speakers, along with the teaching team, the dynamic teaching team uh, of Professor Ashraf, as well as uh, Daniel and Sophie, who you'll meet in just a bit. Um, in between those sessions, there will be asynchronous learning. You may have heard that term uh, recently. Uh, and that is learning that you do on your own via uh, online course materials, videos, uh, reading. Um, as well, you'll have the opportunity to have personalized coaching for your team. And at the end of the program, uh, you will receive uh, a School of Cities certificate of completion and uh, we'll have a big celebration uh, via graduation. Next slide, please. So here are the dates. Uh, this information, by the way, is all available on the website, which we'll put in the chat. Um, so you can see all of the key dates for the program. Um, there are about 25 hours of in-class learning and overall about 60 hours total uh, that you could expect to devote to the program uh, from start to finish. All the sessions are on Thursdays and they will take place in the evenings from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Next slide, please. So who should apply? Uh, I'm hoping after you've heard uh, from Numan and Nation that you are thinking that you should apply or someone you know should apply. Um, but really we're looking for uh, people from across the GTA and we'll talk a little bit about geography in a second. Um, but that includes uh, for our purposes, Peel, Toronto and York region. Uh, we're also looking for people to apply as teams of three. Uh, and so this uh, is a, an initiative that you have to that you have to find two other people that are just as passionate and excited as you are uh, to work on a social justice challenge. You can be from the private, public, or community sector, or a combination of all three. Um, and you should have some experience and focus in working on community-based work, but it doesn't have to be your full-time job. Um, so please feel free. Um, we're looking for candidates from various backgrounds and that includes people that need accommodation uh, and we're serious about this. So um, if you feel that you require accommodation or, you, or you're looking at the program and you don't feel that it could meet your needs, we wanna hear from you uh, and we will, we will do our best to accommodate whatever needs you have. Next slide, please. So this is what the website, uh, sort of looks like it's a bit of a, a bit of a mishmash but we wanted to show sort of the um there are some some tiles you can open up and all of this information is in here and we want to particularly call it the frequently asked questions um we'll take your questions tonight but if you if there's if you go back uh and look at the frequent frequently asked questions we thought of pretty much everything you could think of um uh, that you might have a question about so uh, and we may be adding more after tonight's session and we'll also be posting a recording of this session uh, under the information session recording. Next slide, please. Now, this is what the application looks like. Um, one thing to note, the deadline is December 18th at 5 p.m. Um, so we'd like to have all of, your, all of your applications in by then. There are six questions total, including your contact information. It's not a very long process, but we do want you to think deeply before, um, before filling this out. You can also submit your application via video or audio, and there are instructions there on how to do that. 
Um, what we're really looking for is for you to demonstrate your vision and your passion uh, and to tell us about your idea, what you think you'll need to achieve that idea and what your change will look like. And then tell us about yourself uh, and your team. And next slide, please. Numan, I think, I think we're back to you. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I love the point that was made by, I believe it was Cheryl, you know, who said that we're just tired of talking about the things that we cannot change. Uh, and instead, I think we need to devote this energy into doing the things that we can to change the status quo. Um, I want to say something that's going to sound a little unconventional, but when has that ever stopped me? Laura knows this, Nation knows this. I actually want to encourage you, right, to put together a team in which you have people who don't necessarily think exactly like you. I want you to come together and say, this is a problem worth solving. And I want people to bring some grist to the mill. I want to have some, some friction in the ways in which we have these conversations. I also think that if you have um, great people in your network and you've always wondered about, you know, what else could we do if, if not just hang out at a hockey game or you know, Tim Hortons or a local community center, this is the time for us to kind of put our hands up and say, you know what, enough is enough right, that Black and Indigenous lives matter, that the, the color of poverty is Indigenous and Brown and Black, and we need to change that. I'm tired of ways in which our assets are being uh, used and serviced things that we don't believe in. All of these things will help us craft meaningful solutions to things that seem intractable. Last, last piece that I want to say is this. Next slide, please. When we think about problems, we start computing costs. But when we think about solutions, we start asking the question, what is the return on my investment? That's a frame that I take to this work. If there's one thing you take away about me is this, I'm a hopeaholic. I believe that there's always hope in and through leaders like yourselves who are going to challenge the status quo and believe you me over time over successive attempts really begin to shift it this is not about perfection this is about excellence done right which is through iteration uh, delighted to answer your questions laura how do you want to do this i think i'd like to invite uh, our two uh fearless program co-designers, uh, Sophie Duncan and Dan Cohen up here to uh, help us moderate this Q&A. If Sophie and Dan can join us. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's exciting to see this getting rolling and really uh, energizing to see the excitement in the chat and in the Q&A. So we have a couple of, uh, a couple of folks have asked for a little bit more information about location. Does everybody have to be based in the GTA? Uh, can, you, can you give us a little bit more information about that? Yeah, Nation or myself? I think, yeah, Numan, if you wanna start us off. So to me, I think because this is a, an initiative that's a, a, a jointly supported, um, project between United Way, Toronto, and the School of Cities. Um, I would be interested in seeing ways in which questions of inequity are shaped, reshaped, fundamentally challenged within the greater Toronto area, right? Uh, I am still open to, while that being the field, that they may be collaborators from outside of the space. Brother Nation, what are your thoughts? I agree. So we've had a conversation about this quite recently I would say the central focus is impact in the GTA. The de degree to which uh, folks are bringing ideas that have the potential to scale beyond GTA, I think it, we're absolutely open to that. But each team has to demonstrate that their concept, their idea, their vision and goal can be applied in the GTA um, at the end of the, the experience, the learning experience. Great. Thank you. Dan, do you want to bring in the next question? Yeah, 
thank you, Nation, and thank you, Niman, and, and Laura, thank you uh, for a really great presentation. Uh, all of you did great. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, so I've seen I a come. couple questions. Dan, Dan, what are you excited about? Tell us, please. I, you know, this 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 program has been a long time in the making, and it and it and I say that not only from those of us that are putting this together, but all of those that came before us. And I think what we're doing here is we are continuing a legacy of social justice change and responding to a moment that is really creating an urgency around this movement. And the fact that we have, that, that there is energy and um, there is real commitment to this change. And that just is, is proven in, in the people that are on this call and the questions that we're hearing here, that, that we're ready to sort of harness in it, this energy and, and make this change that is still long overdue. And, and that gets me really excited. Cool. Sophie, how about you? What's got you excited about this? I'm just so excited to see everybody who's here and and commenting and interested and that really makes it feel real like this is uh, coming to fruition. So Amazing. thanks everybody. I've seen uh, we've seen a couple questions here about uh, uh, folks asking if they don't have a team or can't seem to or can put one together if there are ways for them to, to still participate or, or to get help around creating a team. Uh, so I'll turn that over to uh, Laura. Do you want to do get some thoughts on that? Sure. Uh, I think we part of this challenge is to, to find people uh, and maybe people that don't think like you, maybe people that don't work with you. Um, so I, I first want to put the challenge out to everyone to really, uh, you know, try to find a team. If you know you have a great idea and you can't seem to to find two other people that want to work on it with you, um, send us an email uh, and we will certainly keep uh, those people in mind and we'll be able to see if we can connect you. There's no formal program in which to do so, but we'd be willing absolutely to uh, to try. And just that that email there is uh, if you are interested in, in, in getting help, is that outreach email that you see on this final slide as well. I'm sorry, uh, Numan. It looks like you're about to add something. No, no, no. I, I mean, I, I all I would say is there's a couple of questions that I've seen. People saying, you know, if someone's busy, can we still apply? If someone's doing a PhD, I mean, look, I, I want to say to you that you know we need to be mindful of the resources, right? That we're taking advantage of, and I want you to take advantage of these resources but I really want you to commit to saying, we will see this through, right? And that commitment, you will get lots and lots of assistance, support, guidance, learning in a peer-based cohort way. But I think that you've got to be realistic about your expectations. My advice to you though, is to apply, right? And even if you're short a person, you have an extra person in, apply, right? I, I think my view is, and I said this about graduate programs and doctoral programs and any kind of program, the process of application can be an, a really important and essential part of intentional exploration, which is how badly do you want it? What about the process excites you? What are some things that you want uh, you know, answered? Those are, those are my thoughts. Brother Nishan? I think you've covered it, Noman. I, I don't know if this went to all attendees, but uh, Faroza Mohammed, who's on the call, I uh, also mentioned that uh, happy to connect you to local champions network. And so there are other networks that you can sort of source and look for people that are similarly minded and looking to solve these issues too. So thank you for that resource. So I've got, I've got a question here, Dan. Uh, someone said, I think it's Ko who said, uh, do other members have to attend the learning sessions with me? Absolutely. This is all about learning as a team and learning together and making sense of it together, right? That's super important. And, and I would say to you that really, if you miss out on this opportunity, missing out on the, on the, the essence of what this is about. Jill, you had a question about opportunity for sustainability, how our initiatives are change supported and sustained in the longer term. Um, I would say that what we want you to do is to have the learning, get clarity on problem definition, have a methodology and to take it to a prototype. You will get coaching and guidance and some support in helping you get to that. If you're, if you're right-sizing your initiative, you're likely gonna discover that you have this, the resources needed to launch something at a very beta level, like a low resolution prototype. 
And I think that this is a, a living learning studio slash lab where you can try out these ideas without having like, you know, big stake failure um, qualms. So bring your entrepreneurialism, bring your hustle, bring your uh, out there crazy ideas. This is a place to try it out, right? In a learning, joint learning environment. Please do. Yeah, Numan, just to build on that last question, we have a great question here from Shockflow. Uh, can you clarify a little bit about the expectations around this project? Should they be implementing the idea during the program or developing the plan for a solution? And, and how ambitious for the, should those projects be? I always say this, make no small plans, but start small, right? So think about the impact that only you can have, right? And then say, how do we right size this in a way that we know where to get started? So I'm gonna steal a line uh, from the Stanford D School. And um, David Kelly, who, who founded the, the co-founder of the Stanford D School Design School says the following, it's funny, but it's true. He says 100% of the people who are successful get started. Right, so get started. Because if you don't get started, you have a 0% chance of being successful. Someone's, uh, someone's entrepreneurial. They said, can we submit a few ideas and apply for multiple projects with different teams? You're in the wrong business. You should be managing talent. That's great. Um, I, look, I, I, think, I think that if you have more than one great idea and you have multiple teams, their, their team submissions, right? So everyone's um, applications are going to be reviewed collectively by a team of people. Uh, but I really would try to think of this as impactful and choiceful as opposed to just playing the lottery game. Those are my thoughts, Brother Nation, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a pilot. Um, we are approaching it as a test module to see have we uh, created the right combination of experiences and learning modules that deliver on the leadership experience, the learning experience that we endeavor to provide, as you have described earlier in our conversation. There are, there's room for 17 teams of three, and we want a cross-sector representation. So if you think about the mathematics of it, we're looking for about approximately five teams from each sector. So with that in mind, I would strongly recommend come with your most inspiring idea. Um, I would say come with an idea that has some legs to it, uh, has vision to it, but also I would encourage thinking like, what assets are in place right now? What's within, what do I have within my scope to lift this up with my team of three that would make it, uh, make this idea uh, while small, as a starting point, scalable uh, and uh, able to uh, execute on um, action with my team of three at the during or at the end of this process. So that would be my recommendation as folks are thinking about what ideas should I lead with? Should I lead with you know three or four ideas? Um, I'd like to tie a few pieces together. I would say that echoing the words um, often. Um, like a mantra said throughout this process, it's uh, how we teach is a reflection of what we teach. The, the process is part of the learning. And so the encouragement to reach across uh, within your organizations, within your community groups, to folks who could make up a dynamic team of three is part of the process. Uh, and wrestling with what exactly how do you articulate that idea that the three individuals bring is part of the process. This is about leadership that bridges across differences. It's about leadership that bridges across sectors. And so it starts with the immediate challenge of find your team and decide what your idea is as you apply because that will be reflected in your application and in the decision-making process. Thank you, Nation. Thank you, Niman, and thank you, Laura. There is, uh, there's also here a question, uh, and I've seen this pop up a couple times. Uh, is there a stipend, grant, or funding associated with the fellowship? And if so, how does that work? Um, so I'll turn that over. There, there is a chance to apply for that. That will come after the application period. But Niman, I don't know if you want to add to that. 
piece. I'll defer to Lara first and then get, add to what she has to say, please. Sure. Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, there is a, a bursary program that you can apply for to give each team up to $2,000 to uh, offset any of the costs uh, of participating in the fellowship and also um, to help uh, bring your ideas to life and to um, help your public presentation. I'll also say that there are uh, resources that the university will provide um, to all fellowship participants, which are access to our library system, uh, as well as potentially access to virtual space um, in lieu of physical space to help host meetings or uh, to bring people together for your public presentations uh, and promotional uh, support for your initiatives as well. One of the ways that I think about why the programs like this matter is there's lots of ideas that are desirable, right? But you worry about whether they're viable. Well, this is a space to test them out, right? Come with something that you want to prototype, that you want to water test, that you want to create and to learn how to, you know, put some structure, structure some shape to, uh, you've asked a question about, you know, what, what are some things that have been done before you know, stories of York Region, portraits of Mount Dennis. I mean, there, there's initiatives where people wanted to amplify the, the changing nature of communities to create a virtual space where you could have, invite guests in for podcasts, things like that. These are real examples of where neighborhoods and communities, organizations have come together and said, how do we bring perspectives to a broader audience? You might be surprised by just um, how much farther an idea can go once you have both sincerity and rigor. Sincerity that you actually want to make a difference and the rigor of, uh, of processes and ways in which you have somebody else both holding a safe space for you and holding you accountable. To me, this is super important, right? That we actually hold space for you and hold you accountable. And to learn from each other, to share with each other. Um, I'm betting you a meal in person once the pandemic lifts, that you are going to develop new relationships and strong relationships through the process of going through the program. Um, there's some concerns about, okay, the funding and how to split this. This funding is literally meant to give you a little bit, right, of support if you needed uh, to get a data set, if you wanted to um, host uh, you know, podcasting thing, rec uh, recording studio time, whatever you needed to get yourselves off the ground, we would help you with that kind of seed funding. That's not going to make you richer or poorer, but it will help eliminate those uh, entry uh, barriers to entry around just a startup cost that sometimes um, initiatives worry about. Great. And we have a good question here from Henry. What constitutes tangible impact and which metrics will be used to measure that impact? I like how you think, Henry. I would say to you, it depends on, depends on how you define the problem, right? So I want to say to you that you have to think of, of all problems or wicked problems or issues as being multidimensional. Um, it's super helpful for us to get clarity on what dimension, what part, what texture that you want to actually challenge and be super specific on how would you measure that? How would you test for that? And I think that you've got a limited amount of time, a limited amount of resource, but a runway in which you can speed test this idea. So let's do it. But to me, I think it's going from problem finding what the problem is then problem framing, what kind of dimension you're looking for, and then problem solving. What's a small, low resolution prototype that you could actually get to? Got a question here from Zoya that I think is uh, good for Nation here. Should our focus be intersectional or should our application show a focus on one particular social justice issue? I think the question answers itself. I absolutely. We know that the we know that this work uh, intersects on multiple layers, and so I think as folks are articulating their vision or their problem statement that they are trying to solve for, um, the ways in which folks can articulate the intersectionalities of those issues, 
I think demonstrates a richness of understanding and thought about what solutions, what it would take to bring a solution to complex problems. So uh, yes, certainly encourage if you are already seeing the intersectionalities to some uh, challenges that you have, um, you are already working on or have, have in mind to drive towards, um, I, I, I encourage you to, to articulate that. I see a question I want to take on. It says, what is the outcome or main goal for this program? Is it building skills for leaders who are participating, who can then use this in their own careers or current role, like a development opportunity, or is it the project-based in order for teams to pilot a solution in real life? One can't happen without the other. I want to argue that if you actually run a team-based pilot from conception to prototype, and you do that as a group, you will have development that happens that you will use in your current or future roles, right? The intent of this is not to simply limit you in your current roles, but to think about the ways in which you use these tools in your communities, in your personal professional lives, in the ways in which you want to make a difference. Hope that's helpful. I think this is a great question here from an anonymous attendee about, I've been trying to create change in my marginalized community ever since the pandemic started, but somehow I always end up wondering if it ever makes any change. What do you think makes a good program and what is the target population? Is it up to us? So I wanna ask Numan to start off on that. Yeah, you know, I, I love that question and I've been thinking about that because in this very office pre-pandemic, I had someone sitting across from me and they were a mentee of mine through one of the mentorship programs at U of T. And so they were talking about, you know, these big initiatives out there. And I said, I'm just curious, tell me a bit about your own community and what you're doing there. And she was like, well, you know, I don't want to talk, I don't want to deal with uncles and aunties. Like, you know, they're too negative, too toxic. I don't want to talk about it. And I actually want to, I, I, I said to them, you know, I respect your choices, but I also want to hold space for you to talk about those things whenever you're ready. I think it's important for us to actually think about ways in which we can have both the confidence and the competence to change conversations within our respective communities, right? And I'm always of the mind that we're not that special that nobody else thinks like we do around systemic change. So how do we create that awareness or that initiative where we can stand out and say, I'm, I'm taking partners around others who want to challenge the status quo, who's in. And I think, you know, it, ha it, it shouldn't be about charisma. It shouldn't be about followership and leadership. It should be about the idea itself and a tangible thing where you can attract people's attention. So I think there's uh, also a question from Felicia Davis Wessling here. What impacts, if there are examples, have past projects actually had at the city or policy level? It's gonna sound like a Weasley answer, but I don't mean it to. This is, we haven't done a, we have not done a, an initiative like this before, where it's so deliberately uh, cross-sectional and intersectional. So yeah. I, I can't answer that, uh, honestly. For sure, I think that's uh, I think that's an, a, a very authentic answer, Nomana. The the exciting thing about this is the again at, at the risk of sounding like a, a repetitive recorder, it is the bringing together of cross sector partners to think beyond just a community service solution, beyond a public service solution, beyond a corporate solution. But what are the what are the the possibilities in the intersections of those resources, um, those areas of influence, uh, both from a policy level and a direct community impact level. So I, what's exciting about this is the possibility there. But as we are launching this as a new pilot, um, there are many, many leadership training opportunities. You, you can throw a dime and find them anywhere across the city. Uh, we think this is a unique experience that takes a very focused approach on um, creating a learning environment that brings together a diversity of perspectives 
Um, so you, you have folks who've been doing social justice work out there in community, um, social workers, advocates, uh, where does the knowledge, the insights, the passion intersect with folks who are in corporate sector, in, in public sector, to begin to think about what are those policy opportunities that, um, that uh, a team of three can set its vision towards that could lead to impact um, across the GTA. So that's the work we're, we're, we're embarking on. Uh, and that's what we're inviting folks to be part of this, uh, to apply for this uh, inaugural pilot. Two quick responses, Brian. You had a question about the Toronto Ward Museum, where you have a vision uh, of a society that values immigrants and makers of Toronto's past and present. I want to say to you that put an application through, right? So to me, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. Think about ways in which this value proposition, i.e., reimagining the contribution of immigrants to a city of Toronto, put together a team, put, to, put an application forward. I also saw a comment or a question earlier on about, you know, frankly speaking large organizations take credit for ideas of BIPOC people and, and their initiatives. I promise you one thing, there's no way that we're going to actually take credit for your work. We want to amplify, we want to celebrate, we also want to give you tools and skills and experiences that gets you the daylight that your ideas deserve. This is not a project in which we want to usurp your credibility, your ideas, but to support you. I give you my word, I am not interested in taking credit for other people's work or allowing others to do the same. We, we would not be doing this in this way, in, a, in this open source way, if we didn't believe that the best ideas come from out there. I always ask this question to my team and, and my team is on, on the call, you can ask them this. You know, instead of us kind of coming up with ideas in what I call conference rooms of certainty, instead, let's go out there to the clover fields of curiosity, get people to give us ideas that we can invest in and support and see them grow. That's what this investment is about. And Nation, just to build on this, there's a question from Sarah Ali. Uh, how do you see this fitting in with the work that folks are already doing in their communities, work that's already being done on the ground? Oh, you're on mute, sorry. Thank you. Uh, I think this is about building on that momentum. I think it's about building on that effort and looking at intersecting points that help to scale, catalyze, uh, expand that work. Uh, we are leading with this initiative again with a core belief that some of the intractable issues that we are dealing with in community require the leadership the brilliance, the insight, the openness of folks who bring thinking, um, experience, uh, both lived and professional from across different dimensions of our communities. And again, I, 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 I probably sound like a, a stuck record at this point in time. The, the, the uniqueness of this work and partnership with, with U of T is to create a cross-sector experience. So for the folks who have like, first and for, foremost, utmost respect and honor to the folks who have, are doing this work on the ground, um, for the folks who I think as Jill had mentioned earlier, who are holding space in their particular organizations, and you may be the one, two, three voices that are always pushing the boundaries and trying to create space and advance change, whether that's in a large bank or one of the professional firms or in a department in the city of Toronto or the region of Peel or, or York region. There are folks all over sectors who are holding space and trying to drive change. And what we're saying here is let's create a space of mutual learning, idea exchange, challenge that identifies opportunities in which to merge those efforts um, and look at new solutions uh, that uh, otherwise would not be enabled, um, driven just from uh, uh, one perspective. Can I just add to that, Brother Nation? I want to say that we need you to amplify this program. Some of you asked the question, you know, who else is being invited? How do we do outreach? We need you to outreach for, with us to get the word out to those who you think wouldn't have seen it otherwise. So we're not just here to reproduce privilege. We're here to channel and to share privilege. 
Thank you. Thank you, Nation. Thank you, Iman. Uh, I do want to be conscious of time. We have two minutes left here, and we do see all your questions, and we've captured those, and we'll try to make sure our FAQ includes many of those answers. And if there are questions that did not get answered tonight, again, you see the email there, the outreach email. Please feel free to reach out to us there as well. Uh, I do kind of want to close on, uh, on this question. Um, what is the outcome or main goal from this program? Is it building skills for leaders who are participating who can then use that in their own careers or current role like a development opportunity? Or is this project-based in order for teams to pilot a solution in real life? I think, I think no one covered that earlier. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I was reading the <laughs> that, That's all good. It's a great question, you know, I just wanted to hear the answer again. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would also say this to add to what uh, Noman has already said, I, based on the way in which the question is phrased, um, if, if your motivation is just to build your leadership for your career trajectory, womp womp, that's, that's not what we're trying to create here. So know that. Um, I think to echo Noman's words earlier, our endeavor is to create the space for leaders like Sarah and all the folks here who are committed to transformative work and are, opening to, are open to engaging with a diversity of folks um, uh, who, who will bring uh, uh, perspectives, experience into thinking about complex problems and what those solutions might be. Uh, that's who we are hoping will be part of this inaugural pilot uh, and will help us to understand what works well for change leaders. Uh, those who are emerging in this work as change leaders, those who have been driving this work as change leaders, and how do we create the environment for that diversity of leadership to share, to inspire each other, to fuel each other, challenge one another um, in the understanding that it, within, within that, that, ex, that learning experience, that shared learning experience um, is where the, the assumption of where some of the unique solutions will be. That while you may come in with a well thought out idea, the hope is that that idea will be challenged and it will evolve as a result of this experience. I, I love that. I wanna close with this uh, frame that Jean Litka uh, at the Darden School uh, at the University of Virginia, she asked this question. She says, what works? What's happening right now? What if we try something different? What wows? What's impressive? And then what next? That's how I think of this program. Start off with the current state, be daring and say, what if we change things around? Be grasping on to the insights that you learn and then say, how do we actually make this work? How do we actually try what comes next? That's the journey. We invite you to it. Thank you for your inspiration. It matters to me. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, this recording will be posted on our website just as soon as we can get it together. And uh, the applications are open until December 18th. Uh, take a moment tonight and email somebody that you think would really benefit from this and let them know. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Have a good night.